In our lives, we make choices every day. Often these choices can seem mundane or almost insignificant. But all those choices, no matter how small they seem, have consequences on our lives, sometimes far more than we could imagine. One afternoon, I decided to start playing a game. In this game, I made decisions in another person's world. I had no idea then how the choices I made would affect this character's life and my own. Before I realized it, I had become a denizen of a place called Arcadia Bay, a small coastal town in Oregon, set in autumn, and watched over by a lighthouse on a nearby hill. This town would become threatened by trying to change destiny to save a girl, Chloe Price. Max Caulfield, our protagonist, became very real to me. Her journey would come to affect me more emotionally than I would have ever expected. By the game's end, I found that I couldn't simply say goodbye to Max, her best friend Chloe, or Arcadia Bay. I was left with a sense of loss that I couldn't seem to shake, so I returned to that world by making a short film. In the months that followed, I found that I wasn't alone in the way the game had made me feel. Other players had also expressed how they felt about the game and its characters through music, artwork, and films. This film is my journey to meet with these players and to ask them why they were so affected. I want to share their creative process and to share the results of their efforts. I want to find out what is there, Arcadia Bay. A few months after completing my Life is Strange fan film, One Moment, I still felt unsettled. I found myself spending a good bit of time in the Life is Strange fans chat room. There, people talked about the game and its characters very passionately. It had deeply affected them as well. They often shared links to images, music videos, and cosplay videos. I realized that the emotions these artists were exploring seemed to reflect what many of us were feeling. That was the point when I decided to try and make a short documentary. In the beginning, I wasn't sure what artists or musicians to try and contact. Members offered suggestions and helped spread the word about my project. Harpuya, someone I often saw in the chat group, was the first to offer their support. He made me an image of Max and Chloe that I taped to my monitor and used as a kind of mascot. The game inspired him to start drawing, and he created art that has become a staple of the fan community. Harp was uncomfortable being on camera. He's a bit shy and felt his spoken English wasn't good enough. I really wanted to share his story, so I proposed we do a text interview. Then afterward, I had the idea of using an actor to give a voice to his responses. A few weeks later, I met with the talented actor that I'd worked with previously, Manu Barb. I explained my idea, and he agreed to help. He was intrigued by the project and loved the idea and the challenge of becoming Harp's voice. I transcribed our interview and created a script, then used my closet as a makeshift recording studio. Hey, I'm Arpuya. Mm, describing myself, I enjoy playing games and I've always been interested in art but never did anything until I played Life is Strange. The game inspired me to do animation, and thanks to the community, I started to do a lot more in the art direction. I literally started to learn drawing because of the game. I watched with F and I a Let's Play of it, episode one, while doing another thing. It looked kind of interesting. So I bought the game and waited until all the episodes were released and played it. For me, the point where the game became personal was at the ending choice. To be honest, I have to say that I played all the episodes at once in two days. After I finished it, I could not sleep well at all and the ending, or both endings, left me emotionally empty. Just then it came to me what kind of game I had just played. After I finished the game, I felt like nothing mattered anymore. Kind of empty inside and depressed. Not because of Chloe, uh, more like both choices at the end are horrible. And no one should do such a choice. I sacrificed Chloe. At the time I finished the game, I had no friend and was depressed for several days because of that choice. I just could not let her die, but I also felt horrible for all the other people in the town. Uh, I would not say the game is too much like real life. I would say it shows how real life mostly is. 
Sometimes you just have to choose between two bad things. I don't think I empathized more with Chloe more than other characters. But you know more about her than others, for sure. I just thought Max and Chloe had a special relationship, which you get once in a lifetime, if you're lucky. I'm not normally an artist and I've never done anything like it before. But one day, I had this idea for my number one priority. I simply took a screenshot uh, and drew over them. That was about three months after I finished the game for the first time. I had an ID for an animation, so I drew Max and Chloe models and created my first animation, Memories. I kind of like the idea that Max goes through so much to save a very important person to her. It shows how strong she really is, even though she's silent. It's not meant to be a sad pig. As so many think it is. Uh, well, I started to make those pics after I joined Life is Strange fans. We were all pretty addicted to the game and uh, some of us had named ourselves after game characters, so that led to funny situation. Some of my pics are made because of some conversation we had, other were requested. Sometimes I just got the idea and wanted to make them. Others I did after reading fanfics. I wanted to give credit to that person with it, but overall I wanted the pics to be happy and not depressing like the game. Uh, some people wanted me to do a specific pair of characters kissing or so. <laughs> Other I did because they were requested by the community. Plus. Who doesn't want to see girls kissing? I can't uh, remember which one were requested. <laughs> uh, well, the Max and Chloe kissings are not. Uh, I made them without a request. I still like my drawings. I often was told it made people happy and it's cute and all that. That's pretty awesome compliment, I think. And yeah, I think I feel better to have done them. They helped me to express myself too. I think even though the depression I got from the game is gone, I, I still feel very strong about it and, and the characters. It is and always will be something special to me, I guess. With this encouragement, I began the process of trying to contact others with my idea about the project. In time, People responded positively and were willing to be part of my project, so I began to set up pre-interviews. Louis Brasca, who created the fan film Rewind, was the first person I talked to. I found him to be a kindred spirit about filmmaking and Life is Strange. Uh, well, my name is Louis John Brasca. Um, I am 25 years old. Uh, I live in the United Kingdom. Uh, my background is predominantly in acting. More recently, I've started doing filmmaking. I think I watched the trailer for it. I don't know, I just felt there was something about it that really compelled me to take a chance. Um, yeah, I think it was the music, the art style and the concept which really made me made me quite keen to, to try it out. It's, it's a very opening and inviting s s atmosphere that it creates. Um, and I think there's something about psychologically about the warm autumn brown and reddy sort of colours that you get. Um, it, it seems very um, opening and welcoming and unimposing, which I think I think is nice. And then suddenly it throws you into into the storm, and it's just such a juxtaposition between the the menu and that, and it it suddenly creates this huge sense of intrigue. I think by the end of episode one, I was already already pretty involved because it had introduced so many characters and so many so many strands that could have gone in so many different directions. Um, but it was sometime around the episode, end of episode one, beginning of episode two, sort of time scale where I, 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 it's, it's weird because I've never felt as compelled to do something as I did with Rewind. I'd done some, I'd done some videos for YouTube before, but nothing of any sort of real ambition. 
Well, the first time that I sort of thought about, you know, this could actually be a real project that could get, could get off the ground was, I think, in about the August, which probably would have only been a couple of weeks, if, if that, after I played episode one. I, I think, I can't remember whether episode two was out by that point or not. Luke had played it and he was very excited about it and he was the only person that I um, auditioned for Charlie but he turned up to uh, the audition with his hair already sprayed blue so yeah he'd already he'd already played the game and he was he was very keen for it. Natasha Wise who plays Danielle I think was aware of the game. Um, Jennifer Spreadbury who played Becky she played the game but I think actually all the rest of the cast um, hadn't played the game but yeah, the cast and crew honestly were just were fantastic. And I know people say that a lot about series, and you know they feel like they need to pay lip service to their actors. But they were they were genuinely keen. Even the ones who hadn't played the game, um, I think at least two or three of the cast went away and played the game afterwards. So so don't nod can thank me for a few extra purchases of the game. <laughs> we had I think thirteen filming days for the whole series outside. All 13 of them were dry and we filmed in the winter in the United Kingdom and that is unprecedented. There, I think that there were quite a few bits that the game acted as a starting point for when I was writing the script. So in episode two um, where Charlie and Max go into the woods and play with the air rifle, um, obviously that was quite obviously mirrored in, in the game. You know, the beginning of episode five is pretty harrowing and it's a situation that, you know, is hard enough, but with Max's powers starting to fail, as a player, you're trying so much harder to get Max through it. Max almost sort of confronts her psyche, uh, that sort of inner part of herself that's far more cynical and pragmatic about what's going on. Um, and I think that's something that worked equally in the game and and rewind so it was a no-brainer really to put that scene in and I felt like it was a pivotal moment for for both Maxes in terms of trying to finally come to terms with what's happening um, you know realize that you know at some point you're going to have to make a final decision and I think for me that was probably one of the most poignant moments that I had to get into rewind so yeah, it it was it was an interesting process, but I I can I can genuinely hand on heart say that I enjoyed every minute of it, and at no point did I ever feel, oh this is too much effort, you know, maybe I'll tone it down, you know, it's not worth finishing it, um, and it, like I said, it, I've never felt that level of desire and enthusiasm and drive to finish a project before. It's just something about the game, it just it was just something magic about it, and I can't really put my finger on it, which is which is weird, but yeah, there's something about it. For me, the game is still, it's still, it's still in my head. I mean, I think having Rewind means that I will always have a very, you know, a very soft spot for Life is Strange. At this point, I was excited that the project was off to a great start. The next two interviews, however, involve some planning and a road trip. Next time on Finding Arcadia Bay, the road trip. Standing